So today we're going to talk about the community lesson plan that we've been working on. We are going to go over some classroom problems. And my teacher has been experiencing a lot of problems with student absences, lack of interest. We have disruptive behavior going on. This one is something that most teachers probably will experience as well as absence and lack of interest. These three things are very are a very big problem in classrooms. So how can we teach students at home? How can they learn at home? How can we engage students in the classroom? How can we avoid disruptive behaviors? So first for disruptive behavior, we got to figure out what causes it. I went ahead and listed three three things that is a is a cause of disruptive behavior, such as lack of a challenge. If a student feels bored or unchallenged, they're not going to show a lot of interest in the class, and therefore their behavior may reflect that. It can also deal with a poor teaching environment. If you have a classroom that's bare walled and very prison like. Students aren't going to want to be in there. They're going to want to be disruptive, get out of the classroom. You have to be warm and welcoming. Some solutions that we have are choices. By choices, I mean give students choices and how they want to do an assignment. Do they want to do a visual board? Do they want to do an interactive presentation? Do they want to write a paper? Let them express how they want to do it. You can offer hands-on activities, such as a visual board. You can have students work in groups and make something that reflects their understanding of the assignment. You can use strategy games. You, there's multiple game, game sites out there that you can find a game that what you're looking for. You can even create a game using some sources. I personally like using WordWall. It's a very great for coming up with games and multiple choice tests and anything that you want your students to interact with to keep their engagement to avoid disruptive behavior. Absences. This is when sites such as Padlet or Google Classroom come in very handy. Absences. You can't teach a student if they're not there and they can often miss out on learning experiences because of illness, family emergencies, or vacations. Now we can't fault anyone for taking a vacation. We can't fault anyone for being sick and we can't have, you know, fault anybody for family emergencies. And I say this because it's very important that teachers never have a negative interaction with their students. You do not want that. It does not help any situation. Some solutions to absences are pre-recorded videos that a student can access at home, create a digital classroom for absences, or have your whole class online in a digital manner. You can, you can give students at the beginning of the year a syllabus and prepare them for college or a breakdown of assignments and due dates. Let, they, let the student know what you expect so they can meet that criteria. Lack of interest often stems from repetition, mundane lectures. If you're standing up in front of the class every day and just explaining to the students this thing and this thing, they're not going to be interested. If you every day give the same presentation, they're not going to be interested. You have to offer options and choices and different learning and different teaching styles so your students can learn. It often stems from similar assignment formats. If you're just having students do discussions or just having them do tests or essays, they're not going to be very excited to work. And it, this all kind of boils down to having no creative work. If students can't express their creativity, they're not going to feel like they want to be in the classroom. They're not going to feel engaged. They're going to lose all interest in what you're teaching. Some solutions is creative based project assignments such as the one that we are doing now for this class. These are wonderful project based assignments you get. You can have students work in groups. You can have them create maps of a, of a story in a book. You know, depending on what you're teaching, you can have students be very creative 
pictures with history, you can do a timeline, but you can make it to where it's not just writing lines on paper and putting facts on paper. You can make it very unique and individual. You can often give students choices. Choices are how you stem them in the classroom. Give them a choice. Uh, for an example, give them a choice of if they want to do a presentation or an essay, give them a choice of what topics they can choose. Create an interactive learning experience for the kids. Now, the brief description is just behavioral interest absences. This teacher is having trouble keeping attention in her classroom due to these three things right here. And students, and due to that, students are interrupting lectures, they're failing assignments, and they're falling behind. This is primarily, this lesson plan is primarily for the 9th and 10th grade. We want to ask questions such as these three right here. Are there any helpful sources, appropriate solutions? How do we deal with this age group? You First, always ask questions. Never have any negative interactions. Always communicate, listen, and adapt to student needs. That is your job as the teacher. For lesson topics, we'll cover citations. Where there are three main parts to citations, which is what does it look like in text? What does it look like out of text? When you're just citing it as a source, what format are you using? And why is it important? Why do students need to know this? Let the students know what they're learning is important and give them reasons for why it's important. So this aligns with a certain curriculum. It's the literacy requirements for Common Core and the NETS SS. So the RI.9 through 10.1 is just that students know how to cite and they provide supporting evidence. And it also will give an assessment of is students will draw inferences from the text. It's very important. They need to be able to analyze the text to understand it. Some of the more real life scenarios for this would be the 1.3 evaluate information. You need to determine accuracy, credibility, and relevance of source. And I say this is more real life because every day I find myself reading the newspaper and having or reading an article and I have to determine is this accurate is this credible and is it even relevant to my everyday life or the world around me it's a very useful tool so some tools that we will actually be using for this lesson is YouTube and you're thinking what YouTube well we're using YouTube because it's going to give the students the basics of citations it's going to have some everyday use, such as, do you cite when texting? You absolutely do. It's going to be self-paced. Students are more than welcome to pause the video, take their time, take their notes, ask questions. There's going to be a discussion up to where students may take two days to go through the videos and ask questions and discuss what they're learning together. Khan Academy is probably one of the best learning sites out there. Not only can you give students information to videos such as the one I have here, which is citing evidence, the difference in implicit and explicit and implicit. It's going to have different learning opportunities. There's more than just this one video. It has a whole lesson dedicated to citing, and it's really great if you have a student that is struggling. They may go through, watch individual videos, do different assignments just to understand that, and they can possibly get extra credit for that based on your teaching style. And then for the third day, we're going to go over some games, such as MLA Master Blaster. It's going to give students two essential key points here. It's going to give students types of citations and how to locate and read a citation, like all the information. So the types of citations will cover over book, newspapers, articles, is it a book chapter you know things like that there's so much more than just what these four show here locating information uh, you're going to locate where the author is you're going to locate the page numbers you're going to want to look for the publisher and maybe you want to know the title what year it was published citations carry all of this all of that information 
So right here I just have for those watching, you can scan these QR codes and it'll take you to the YouTube video, um, the Khan Academy video, and the game that I have listed for this lesson plan. It's just the simple activities for students to do. The nitty gritty of it would be the assignments. We are first going to complete the first three activities of watching the videos, playing the games, making sure there is a complete understanding. And so students by at the end of these three will know when to cite, know what to cite. The second part of this lesson plan is students will be given a one page story. They will write a brief 150 word report over the reading. So they will need to provide at least two quotations so I can see that they know how to do in text citations. And then they'll have a separate page where they're going to cite their two sources as a, a source as a whole in the MLA format. So students are, so it's just important for teachers to remember this. Students may discuss concerns about assignments in a discussion board such as one created using Padlet. I highly recommend Padlet. It will build social confidence. It will allow teachers to assess and provide feedback based on what the questions the students are asking. It's just an overall helpful tool. We're going to evaluate and assess the assessment based on <clears throat> a 10 question multiple choice test. It'll tell you their individual skill level. And we need to know, do students understand all concepts? Well, what are your concepts? So for this, I have three main concepts. Locating information, which format is going to be used, differences in information, Obviously, there are more concepts such as type of citations and so much more. But for this, we need to know what is implicit. You know, is it relevant information? Is it based on evidence and text? Or is it both? Implicit is based on evidence and text. We need to know what type of citation did we cover this week? Are the students paying attention to the format? And if so, they will choose MLA. This right here, the type of citation, we need to know the type of citation for this. We also need to know about locating information. So again, author, title of the book, there's going to be the page numbers, the year, the version, the publishing, and you can see that it's got book chapters in here, it's got the pages in there, it's got the title, published the date, it's a print copy, so this is most likely a book. So if you can understand what you're teaching, the students should be able to understand what you're teaching. And if you have students that fall behind, you're more than welcome to have them go to Khan Academy, extra help videos, do extra credit assignments, everything like that. Look out for your students and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this community project lesson plan covering the citations.